We all love pets. In fact, countless studies have suggested that the company of a furry friend might even be beneficial to our mental health. That said, some pets out there are a little strange, and their owners have gone way beyond what can be considered a normal relationship with their animal friends. So today, we'll be meeting some crazy pets with even stranger owners, including a chicken raised for meat that's now convinced he's a dog, a woman with 28,000 cats, and a handful of pet owners who refuse to say goodbye to their dearly departed fur babies. Strap in and stay tuned, because things are about to get pretty weird on this pet safari. Boo the Chicken It was a dark, tragic day back in 2017 when Mary Bowman's much-beloved pet chicken, Julian, passed away. While some folks would merely see the passing of a chicken as a free dinner opportunity, Mary was heartbroken. In time, though, her heart would mend, and in October 2017, she decided to adopt a new chicken. After all, it's what Julian would have wanted. It was then that she became aware of Boo. This chicken, like many, was destined to be slaughtered, but had luckily been rescued from that fate by members of a Facebook group called Vegans with Chickens. It was through this Facebook group page that Mary became aware of the chicken, who was now up for adoption, and since Boo looked just like her late Julian, Mary believed it was fate that had brought them together. A chicken that looks just like another chicken? What are the chances? Because Boo was raised on a farm for meat, he was grossly overfed, meaning that at just six weeks old, the age when chickens are typically slaughtered, he weighed almost 15 pounds. For comparison, the average healthy, naturally fed chick only weighs around six and a half pounds. As a result of Boo's obesity, he suffered from heart troubles and a lack of blood oxygen. However, once he settled into his new home and healthier diet with Mary, over time, the once neglected chicken ended up with a clean bill of health and became a domesticated pet. Strangely, he even developed behaviors we typically attribute to dogs from having free run of the house and eating out of a dog's bowl, to even going on walks and family outings. Boo essentially became Mary's pet chicken booch. So much so, he even can play fetch. I mean, just check out this clip from Boo's own Instagram, the real Boo the Roo. Dang. Okay, so perhaps he hasn't quite got the fetch part of it down yet, but given time, I'm sure he'll be in the park catching frisbees with all the other dogs. But playing games aside, according to Mary, Boo is so much more than just a chicken, or even a dog for that matter. Boo is a genius. From being a virtuoso on the old Ebony and Ivories, to his secretary work, Not to mention being a fashion icon, what with his own ultra chic poop bag. So it's pretty clear this chicken's got more to him than we usually assume for a bird of his kind. But are we underestimating chickens in general? Boo's often likened to a dog in his behavior, and it might surprise you to learn that multiple studies have found that the intelligence of chickens and dogs is actually roughly on par. Of course, there's little research or evidence to prove whether it's possible for a chicken to actually believe it's a dog, or even another species. But research conducted by the UK's Biotechnology and Biological Sciences Research Council has strongly suggested that they're capable of empathy, meaning it's technically possible that a chicken might observe, empathize, and tune in to a dog's emotional reactions and behavior. With this clever behavioral mirroring, the two species can certainly coexist and get on with one another very well, even giving each other piggybacks. Okay, admittedly, that last one was a wonderful bit of AI-generated imagery, but point is, chickens and dogs can be friends, and are a lot more similar than we often give them credit for. But Boo's owner Mary isn't the only proud chicken mom out there whose bird has a certain canine flair. Movie star Jennifer Garner also has a few poultry pals that she treats like pet dogs. I mean, just check out this Instagram post where she and her pet chicken, hilariously named Regina George, can be seen heading out for a walk. Presumably though, Jennifer's chicks aren't quite as advanced as Boo, not at least when it comes to texting and shredding the guitar. Huh. 
<laughs> I love Coldplay. Encore! Stuffed Pup. Moving on to some pets whose owners are the most unusual part of the partnership now. With 95% of US pet owners reporting to feel their pet is part of the family, it can be tough when they pass away. However, some people take their pet grief to a whole nother level. In 2008, UK couple Kimmy and Stuart Walker Harris brought home a little puppy chihuahua named Fifi. Small she might have been, but of all the family's dogs, Fifi apparently had the biggest personality. So much so, Kimmy claims Fifi was, quote, the best dog ever. However, in 2021, at age 13, Fifi passed away. So as all normal pet owners would, Kimmy, wait, am I reading this right? Kimmy took Fifi to the taxidermist and had her stuffed? Oh, sweet Jesus. I'm not kidding. Just moments after Fifi's final breath, she was hurled into Kimmy's freezer as to, you know, preserve her good looks. She was then skinned, stretched, and stuffed, creating what Kimmy now calls the new Fifi. Now, taking pride of place in the couple's bedroom, the new Fifi perches on a chair like she once did. Only now dead. But that doesn't matter to Kimmy, as she explains she just likes seeing and stroking her, even admitting to saying morning Fifi every morning while petting the stuffed pooch. I just dread to think what Kimmy might do should Stuart kick the bucket. Humphrey the Hippo. It was a stormy day in South Africa 2005 when a baby hippo got caught in a flood. Being just five months old, it must have been distressing, considering that hippos typically live under the protection of their mothers until around seven to eight years old. However, this lost hippo was about to cross paths with 40-year-old Marius Els, who would take in and care for the animal. Marius called him Humphrey, and before long, Humphrey and Marius would become what Marius likened to father and son. But would you believe it, it turned out having a pet hippo was an ideal. Being one of the most aggressive animals on the planet, Humphrey's hippo instincts meant he would often charge at people who dared go near Marius' farm. Not only that, but he would sometimes break out of his enclosure, wander to a nearby golf course, and then aggressively chase down the golfers. It sounds like a bit of fun and games, but the shocking truth is that hippos kill around 500 people in Africa every year. So this pet was a genuine public hazard. But that didn't bother Marius. After all, Humphrey would never hurt him, right? Well, on one fatal November day in 2011, everything changed. Humphrey, out of nowhere, turned on Marius, sending his own father on the one-way train to Heavensville, leaving his remains submerged in the very same river that Marius rescued Humphrey from just six years earlier. It's sad, but I can't help but think this could have been avoided had he not befriended a 1.2-ton deadly beast. Puppy Love Ever since being a little girl, UK resident Amanda Rogers had dreamed of having the perfect wedding. But even with a short-lived marriage during her 20s, Amanda never managed to find her Mr. Right. So feeling dismayed with human love, she turned her gaze to the canine world. No, really. She fell in love with Sheba, her pet Jack Russell. And according to Amanda, it was a no-brainer. After all, Sheba made her laugh and would comfort her when she was feeling low. She had everything you could want in a life partner. You're probably wondering how one might go about proposing to a dog. And well, it's easy. Amanda simply got down on one knee and popped the question. And it was obviously a yes when Sheba wagged her tail. Whether we can consider that consent is open to debate. But regardless, Amanda and Sheba married in 2014. Unofficially brought together in holy matrimony in Croatia, they were joined by 200 guests. Hmm. I wonder if any of Sheba's side of the family went to the ceremony? Anyway, Amanda described it as a wonderful moment while, surprisingly, Sheba is yet to comment on the marriage. Though Amanda assures she is, quote, totally Sheba's bitch. <laughs> so altogether, it seems either Amanda is a few dog treats short of a pet store, or she's one of the greatest trolls of our time. I'll leave that up to you to decide. Hawaiian Hamster now we press forward onto a story of love and loss experienced by Lisa Murray Lang from the UK. It was 2019 when Lisa brought home her pet hamster Spud for the first time. Given the pandemic that began unfolding towards the end of 2019, much of Spud's little life was spent in the COVID-19 lockdown. While it's not exactly uncommon for hamsters to live their lives without exploring much further beyond their owner's house, Lisa felt guilty knowing Spud had never seen the world. So she began crafting replicas of famous landmarks such as London, Paris, and Hogwarts to name a few, showing Spud the world from the comfort of home. 
though his favorite spot undoubtedly was Hawaii. Man, I'm a little jealous of his lockdown vacation. But by March 2022, Spud kicked the bucket at just three years old, roughly the average life expectancy for a hamster. Lisa was devastated, even claiming that Spud gave her a reason to get out of bed. She knew in her heart that there was only one thing to do, Hawaii. With Spud now turned to ash, Lisa took a $4,000 trip to Hawaii where Spud's essence was scattered into the Hawaiian breeze. Wow, really puts the popsicle stick gravestone I made for my dead hamster to shame. Posh Pup. These days, people can get carried away when it comes to pampering their pooches. From grooming to garments, dogs have never been so domesticated. However, this next pet owner takes it to another level. In 2021, Canadian chef Sean McDonald got a beautiful Labrador puppy, which he named Hazelnut. With a passion for cooking and a love for hazelnut, Sean got thinking, why not combine the two? No, not cook hazelnut, but cook five-star meals for hazelnut. And just take a look at hazelnut tucking into braised beef and bone marrow. With a taste for the finer things, Hazelnut routinely dines on dishes such as lobster bisque, king crab, carbonara, and charcuterie boards, to name a few. When asked, Sean cited Hazelnut's most luxurious meal as beef with foie gras, bone marrow, truffle, and lobster. Damn, does this mean there's a dog out there who literally eats better every day than I ever have? Heck, Hazelnut's even chowed down on octopus. Hmm, there's gotta be a way I can get in on this free deliciousness. Um, woof woof? Crazy Rat Lady. For most of us, finding a rat in our house would cause utter panic and chaos. Of course, it's not unheard of for people to have pet rats, but one woman has taken that to the extreme, commanding an army of 50 rats. In 2018, 51-year-old Californian Michelle Rabin got herself four pet rats. Two naked rats, Chuck and Elvis, plus two hooded rats, Lucy and Ethel. But for Michelle, four rats just didn't hit the spot. Over the next four years, she would acquire 46 more rats, which she allows to scurry around her and her house. Take a look. It's the stuff of nightmares for many, but according to Michelle, her quote unquote, babies can do no wrong. She testifies that they're personable creatures who are mostly friendly. And while they're generally known for living in sewers and trash cans, Michelle says the idea of rats being dirty and diseased is just an inaccurate stigma. And sure, these little guys can be pretty cute on occasion, but is that really an excuse to live with 50 of them, Michelle? Is it? Catacular. Meet 73-year-old Linnea Latanzio. In 1992, Linnea's father asked her to help him find a new pet cat. Unfortunately, Linnea couldn't find him a pet cat, but she did find him 15 kittens. Ever since then, she hasn't been able to curb her passion for feline friends. So much so that in 2016, it was reported she was sharing her home with around 1,100 cats. But don't worry, she isn't your classic throwing cats while incoherently screaming type cat lady. She runs a sanctuary for feral and abandoned kitties. The Cat House on the Kings, found on Kings River Road in Parlier, California, is Linnea's 12-acre cat sanctuary where she and her 1,100 cats live. Or at least Linnea used to, having been forced to vacate the overcrowded main house and set up camp in a mobile home. But as crazy as a thousand cats may sound, Linnea is constantly finding her feline residents new homes with loving families. So it's actually estimated that in her whole career, she's had around 28,000 cats total. But all this kitty care comes at a hefty cost. Roughly $1.6 million a year, taking into account staff, food, litter, maintenance, and medical fees. In fact, Linnea even trained as a vet to keep costs down, but that's not a scratch on the whole expense, which is just barely able to be funded by donations and sponsorships. Hmm, I guess saving yourself over a million dollars a year by not being surrounded by over a thousand cats doesn't appeal to some folks, huh? A shoe with a view. All right, gather around, kids. I have a story to tell you. 
This is the story of Chubba the Toad. Once upon a time in 2019, a woman named Sita Hood found a little green visitor on her porch. And no, not the extraterrestrial kind, the amphibian kind. Sita was keen to accommodate her little toad guest, so she offered him a shoe to live in. Not just that, but she gave him a name too. He was now Jabba the Toad. And Jabba was very pleased with his shoe house. So much so that every day Jabba would go about his life and then retreat back to the warm, cozy, and presumably slightly stanky comfort of Sita's shoe. But as summer came to an end, Jabba departed into the nearby woods for hibernation. It was a long and lonely winter for Sita, but as so often is the case, true love prevailed when the following spring Jabba returned to Sita's shoe. It was then that Sita made the shoe Jabba's official summer home with a bold sign warning all to not disturb his majesty. Unfortunately, there's been no public update as to whether Jabba returned for a third summer, but Sita said that regardless of whether he returned again, she was grateful for Jabba's friendship. And on that note, I'm grateful for your friendship. So why don't you go ahead and hit those like and subscribe buttons to really solidify this thing between us. Thanks, friend. Now let's get back to it. Dead Dog Chic So far, we've already seen how bereaved pet owners can do the strangest things when their pets die. And well, this next story is no exception. In 2008, Beth and Brian Willis, a retired couple from the UK, made headlines after doing something pretty peculiar with their dearly departed dogs. Turned out, they'd made them into sweaters. Yep, what was once a Swedish Lapoon named Penny and white Samoyed named Kara were both immortalized in sweater form. As insane as that might sound, rest assured that Beth and Brian weren't exactly wearing their pet's skin. What they'd actually done was collect the molted fur from their dogs and when they eventually passed, had it spun into yarn which was used to knit their woolly sweaters. Still, I'm not gonna lie, Beth and Brian, it's a bit weird. Nevertheless, they're smitten with their sweaters, claiming they're, quote, extremely warm and pretty much waterproof. Yeah, if you get caught in the rain with one of these on, just give yourself a quick shake and you're good to go. Lady Gaga. Ah, Lady Gaga. Pop star, movie star, fashion icon. She's a global phenomenon. Oh, wait, wait. They're telling me we're not talking about that Lady Gaga? <laughs> okay, from the top. <clears throat> Ah, Lady Gaga. Chicken. Yep, Lady Gaga isn't just a pop star, but a fuchsia pink chicken belonging to Sharon Folks. A big fan of the real Gaga, Sharon named her chick Lady Gaga and dresses her in equally eccentric outfits. Which, by the way, she occasionally matches with. Work it, girls. And it's not just her name and appearance that pays homage to the star. But according to Sharon, the little clucker even has a diva attitude to match. Much like the star, Lady Gaga turns heads everywhere she goes with her posse. I mean, as if seeing someone walking a chicken wouldn't already grab your attention, let alone a chicken wearing a dress. But that's just the life of a star. From photo shoots to attending events, such as Manhattan's annual Blessings of the Animals, where pet owners come together to celebrate their animal pals, Lady Gaga is one busy chick. And hey, she's even a musician too. With any luck, perhaps one day we'll even get some chicken covers of Lady Gaga's best hits. Clucker Face, The Edge of Clawry, Beak Romance. All right, I'll stop. All I wanna know is, when's the hottest musical collab of the year coming from Gaga and Boo? Tatted Terrier. Oftentimes, rescue animals don't have the best start in life. And when Texas man Chris Mendiola rescued his dog Bear in 2010, he noticed something shocking. Bear had a tattoo. Disgusted that anyone could do such a thing, Chris decided to make a statement. He got a matching tattoo. But what exactly was the tattoo? Well, let's just say it wasn't your classic rose or heart kind of tattoo. Instead, it was a male symbol with a cross through it. Or as people were quick to point out to Chris, a medical symbol indicating that Bear had been neutered. You see, in the US, some vets and shelters will tattoo dogs that have had the snip so they know they're not a threat of becoming a multiple-time baby daddy around their local area. To Chris's surprise, his grand gesture, which was intended to be heartfelt, sent him viral for all the wrong reasons. 
Still, Chris maintains that his tattoo is but a sign of love for Bear and that he has no regrets. Are you sure, Chris? Not even just a little? Oscar-winning horseplay. You've heard the phrase to work like a horse, and well, that's because generally, horses are hard workers. Yet one horse in Korea doesn't exactly have the greatest work ethic. Meet Jin Gang, the horse who refuses to work, ride, and, well, do anything. In fact, this horse is so lazy that if anyone tries to ride him, he'll simply drop to the floor and play dead. And let me tell you, he does a very convincing job. With his eyes closed, mouth ajar, and contorted arms and legs, this pony puts on a truly Oscar-winning performance. After lying there for a moment or two, he'll then wait until the coast is clear and then stand back up. But should anyone approach him again, he'll reassume the deathbed performance. While the collapsing to the floor isn't certainly unique, it's said that horses might refuse to ride for a multitude of reasons. The four main ones cited as either pain, misunderstanding, fear, or as is likely the case with Jin Gang, disrespect, challenging the authority of the perceived leader of the social hierarchy. Or maybe this horse just needs a chance to make it big on the stage, seeing his name in lights in Broadway, as he so clearly desires. Someone get this fine actor an agent. Jackie to Jack Russell. In today's day and age, everyone should feel free to be and express who they truly are, no matter what race, gender, or sexuality. In fact, things have gotten so progressive that even a dog had gender reassignment surgery. Well, in a way. Allow me to explain. In 2015, Frank and Mary finally, a couple from Scotland, bought a female Jack Russell named Molly. However, over time, they noticed Molly wasn't behaving all too ladylike. And what they described as increasingly male behavior, Molly would do innately masculine canine behaviors, such as sometimes lifting her leg to pee. It sounds minor, but the finally's wondered if there might be a medical issue or discomfort causing the behaviors. So they took Molly to the vet. Lo and behold, an examination would reveal that Molly was actually intersex. That is, she exhibited both male and female privates. In Molly's case, she had, for want of a better word, normal female external bits, but a pair of, uh, shall we say, chew toys hiding on the inside. Of course, this is extremely rare, what with only 15 other recorded cases of a similar situation on record. Still, the vet went ahead and removed Molly's male parts, affirming that doing so would prevent it from developing into a potentially painful condition as she got older. Regardless, it's said that she's now happy, fit, and healthy. I guess when your main concern is scratches, kibble, and sniffing butts, losing a few pieces of hardware downstairs doesn't trouble you all that much. And that wild tale brings us to the end of today's video. But tell me, which of these strange stories shocked you the most? Let me know in the comments, and as always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.